On this World AIDS Day, people around the globe remember the millions who have died from the disease. Tonight on the Salt River Indian Community, a well-known AIDS educator joined tribal members in a candlelight march. Mary Kim Titlow joins us with that story. Mary Kim? Well, Lisa Tagger comes from a renowned family of Native American artists. She was infected by a boyfriend in 1988, but didn't know she had the AIDS virus until 1992. Her story has since touched many lives. When my father asked my mom to marry him, he told her she'd have nothing to worry about because he had a million dollar hand. I was told I suffered the most over the loss of my father. I was able to take gymnastics classes with money my mom made off of reproducing my dad's artwork. I was a cheerleader in high school, football homecoming queen, and I graduated a virgin. Learning I was HIV positive was not difficult for me to accept, especially after the loss of my brother. Warning others about the deadly disease was vital. Fitness and health have always been the top priority in my life. I wanted to create an aerobic video by natives for natives. As it neared time to shoot the aerobic video, I was unable to walk and my coordination was gone. After years of suffering, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. On one of my speaking tours, I met and fell in love with four Lakota Sioux siblings, ages three, five, six, and seven. I petitioned the tribe and was granted custody. My plan was for us to live happily ever after. In 1992, when I learned I had HIV, the chances of an infected mother passing her virus on to her child was 15 to 30 percent. In 2003, when I decided to try to conceive a child through artificial insemination, the chances of a mother infecting her child dropped to less than 1 percent because of the new drug therapy. Although my daughter was murdered, I still haven't given up on my dream of happily ever after.